A reading from the 13th Psalm. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep the sleep of death and my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Here ends the reading. How long, O Lord? How long, indeed? I hope that in my reading you could hear it. I believe it helps to hear it come from someone else and not only feel it bubbling up inside of you. And if you haven't felt it on your own lately, I dare say, Keep living. Wake up, open your eyes, take a peek at the news, keep looking, keep watching. See the people marching, hear the mothers crying, smell the smoke of fires, feel the sweat building on your face under your mask. All of our lives are different. And whether or not you've thought of it in these words, the sentiment is the same. How long, O oh Lord? How long, indeed? Just how long will we find ourselves bereft of a hug? Physically distanced from family, friends, and really from everyone. Watching where we walk, who is nearby, thinking and rethinking about everything we touch, wondering if anybody else is having this hard of a time. Just how long will we be avoiding one another, eating carry out instead of dining in, spending extra money on delivery, hearing stories about our favorite shops and restaurants that won't ever reopen, reading posts from friends who've been looking but still don't have a job, inundated with numbers and percentages trying desperately to unsee body counts and unimagined images of people dying alone. Because right now, many of us are alone. And those of us that aren't, we feel it. Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long, oh Lord? How long indeed? In the midst of a global pandemic, as if that wasn't quite enough, a perfect storm erupted. Death after senseless death, but this time while everyone was watching. Folks isolated, quarantined, home from school, out of work, sick or scared to get someone else sick, at home with little to do, TVs on, internet streaming, with cameras rolling and folks all over saying their names. The difficult, frightening, carefully lived existence of so many black and brown folks, all our business, the struggle against the system, the pain of pushing against the insidious enemy of racism exploded into protests and marches, monuments, removals by night and streets being painted in the day complete with the occasional anti-protest, anarchist firebug and Confederate flag flyover. How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? You'd think, well, I'd hope that hundreds of years was long enough, but how long, O oh Lord? How long, 
indeed an answer. An answer, Lord. Isn't that what we're all looking for? When I say all here, I really do mean all. In one way or another, we are all suffering. Whether you're suffering because new ordinances to cover your face takes your liberties away, or you're suffering because you're too poor to see a doctor regularly, let alone now that you have a cough and a little heaviness in your chest, or you're suffering because you watched the video and now you can't sleep and you keep seeing his or her or their faces and it rings in your ears. I can't breathe. Suffering for different reasons, yes, and in different ways, sure, but we're all shaken. I know I am shaken. And I remember feeling that shaken to a core just a couple weeks ago. I could feel a heightened awareness as I left my building near the corner of Peachtree Street and Pine in Midtown, heading to the parking deck after 6 p.m. on the night the city was being shut down. And I could feel my blackness all five feet, eight inches of it, knowing in the back of my mind that if I were seen as larger than someone else, I would be seen as a threat. I made sure my hospital badge was affixed to my jacket facing outward and I wouldn't have to reach for it. And when I got to the top of the parking deck and approached my car, I could hear one, no, two helicopters in the sky and sirens in the distance. And wait, what was that other sound? My heartbeat. This kind of response, this brand of shaken, even from a man who didn't watch the video, I refused. Honestly, I didn't have the energy to give to it. I, like our psalmist, like all of us, have been searching for an answer to. No, not the answer to the question of how long. That I'm content to let be our cry of lament. But when we've reached the place where we finally let it out, finally express ourselves, finally acknowledge the ways in which we are suffering, the real question is, what now? To be clear, I'm not talking about the what now of the public sphere. There are plenty of options there. Vote, write your representatives, talk to friends, neighbors, anybody who will listen, discuss your views, listen to others, protest, pray, rinse and repeat. But when all that dies down, when you encounter yourself in that quiet or sad or confused or angry, whatever it feels like when you encounter yourself in that time, what now? But I trusted in your steadfast love. And as another psalm says, his steadfast love endures forever. Being a person of faith, I, I have to find my way back to the love of the Lord. Back to the place in the scripture that tells us the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I have to come back to this place where I can be reminded of the greatness of God's faithfulness. Lord unto me. The place of love that drives out hate that fills me up and moves me to go and do and be how God has called for me to be. The same love with which I am to turn around and love God and love my neighbor as myself. You see, I haven't lost my faith because I have recognized and vocalized my suffering. I actually can be afraid and still have faith. 
I am, after all, only human. Human and living fully into what that means, feelings and all. So my tears and my screaming and my questioning and my wondering is not a statement of who I know God to be, rather. It creates an opening, a space to show you who I am. My heart, the one that feels heavy in my chest, that mourns daily with all who continue to die, is the same heart that shall rejoice in the Lord's salvation. And my lips that shake my voice when I'm afraid, catch my tears as they fall, are the same lips that will sing to the Lord, knowing that the Lord has, is, and will continue to deal bountifully with me. And I pray with all of us. Amen.